celebrate the winter solstice and share a drink with you guys. And this is Sandman. Uh, it was a gift. And it's 20 year old, 20 port. Wow. So what? <laughs> it's kind of a, a curiosity that way back when, mm -hmm. like you remember 1948, don't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Right? Oh, I remember very well. That's when I was conceived. <laughs> I was at St. John's my freshman year. And everybody then split home and only a few of us were left in the dorms. So a friend of mine, uh, who later became a great figure in uh, IBM, uh, Greenberg, I, I, I was, we were sitting in and I said, you know, uh, what are we going to do tonight? And he said, you know, I got a bottle of Sandman Port. <laughs> And I said, well, that's a rather nice thing to do on Christmas weekend. Uh, I said, wait a minute, let's not just drink. Why don't we read aloud back and forth and have a little fun? He said, great idea. Let's do the Republic. Right? So we were reading book seven. And I had just come from a class where uh, a couple of people in, on the staff and among the students were holding the idea that the Republic is really about a political state. And you could understand the whole Republic simply by knowing that everything applies to a political state, and that's what Plato is crafting, an ideal Republic. Well, I was bugged by that. and. Uh, I wasn't sure how to address it uh, uh, because uh, I often at the, in those days was rather rude. I've become somewhat more modest over the years. But so in any case, we're reading along and uh, I said, I'm waiting on her. Haven't we just come from a class on the Republic where he spends uh, book nine, book ten, book nine especially, a whole critique against Homer. I mean, he's putting down Homer. I said, I happen to like Homer. Why is he doing that? So we're reading along. And then up came this quote. Um, he just finishes this discussion about how great prizes and honors are available for people who compete against the figures on the cave that have flashed before the prisoners. And they give applause and they congratulate one another on being able to anticipate the new shadows that are cast on the wall. And then he says this. Um, now this is the person who's now looking over all of this. Would he not feel with Homer and greatly prefer, while living on earth, to be a serf to another, a landless man, and endure anything rather than to hold the opinions with them and live their life. I said, wait a minute. You can't hold the idea that this is an allegory designed for understanding a political state or an ideal state. It's absurd. So my friend Greenberg said, well, you know, that is rather curious because here's the high point in book seven explaining the allegory of the cave, and he's quoting Homer, and yet he's putting him down in the tenth book. 
What's going on? Does this make any sense? So we agreed the thing we would do that evening over port, this kind of port, was that we would go through the book and every time we found quotes, especially about Homer in the Republic, we would open up Homer and look for the corresponding quote and what is going on in Homer to see if the circumstances in Homer might be analogous or similar to what's going on in Plato's Republic. Well, that was really quite interesting because in that moment, I, I knew the people who were professors didn't see this. This, you know, this is basic, it's right in the text. And therefore, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder from that point on until they kicked me out. I was kicked out, by the way, I hope you know. Three days before graduation, the dean called me and he said, Pierre, I have something that's very difficult to describe. I said, go ahead, go ahead. And he's lighting his pipe and filling, I'm filling his pipe to light it. He said, um, it's rather difficult. You see, uh, you're the kind of person who we don't want to leave being called to St. Johnny's. And I said, well, that's thoughtful. Uh, I never thought of myself as being a St. John. I was just here to read a hundred great books and have some fun. He said, no, no, that's, that's what we don't like. We, frankly, you're not graduating. So I had 152 units that were somewhat passing. Usually they were between a B and a C and once in a while a D. When I had trouble in the class, I disrupted it. And so I called my mother and parents, father, and said, by the way, <clears throat> if you're planning to come, and they said, what did you do? And I said, you won't believe it. And my mother and father said, well, why don't you tell us? So I told them, and they said, you know, some people can lie real well, and you're it. That could not have happened. <laughs> So that ended my career at St. John's. In any case, that evening opened up Plato for me. And in celebrating that 48 with a <coughs> bottle of Sandem and Port, I'd like to share it with you guys. Well, did you, did you and your friend, do, did you do that that night? Did you get the Sandem and Port and get out to Plato and the Homer and go back and forth? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I said it woke, woke me up to new levels on Homer as well as on Plato, you know, so. And the, the people I were with were in left field. You know, the, the. So, in honor of that and in fun with that, I want to share it with you guys before we do some work. Let's see. Why don't I just smash it? Yeah. No. <laughs> Right? And we have an official secretary who's done brilliantly. Yes. Thank you. Right? Thank you. And you have all cooperated in a high level. And Julie Hoygaard is now celebrating it. She's getting into the spirit of things right now. Yeah. <laughs> getting into the spirit is exactly right. <laughs> and to Pierre. All right. There we go. And here's to all of it, right? The game goes on. Mm. The anagogic leader of all anagogic leaders of all time. Mm. And Barbara is now going to make a, a offer a tome, a, tome. a tome on the role of difference in Plato's Parmenides. Really? Who is that person? Is there someone else by that name here? <laughs> Care to? No, right now? No. No, it's, it's a great question. We all explored it. Does anyone feel that I should on the basis of, or that you should or you can? I would love to hear it. Go ahead. I said I would love to hear it. No, no, no. You would love to hear it yourself. Yes. yes. No? Um. 
say the second hypothesis is an exposition of the intelligibility of the great and the most significant brilliant light of being, sometimes called the idea of the good, right? Mm -hmm. And what's amazing about that is that in that experience, one can infer from it all the ideas on the level of reality. But the one idea that is central to the whole thing it's different. The different. The bit, right? The different. Why? The second hypothesis starts with the one participates in Usia. But for that to take place, that presupposes there must have been a division. Or otherwise the two of them could never have come to, into being and participate in one another. So therefore the idea of difference is the most celebrated and key term in the second hypothesis of the Parmenides. So here's the difference. Here's the difference. So how about praising difference since we're all Yes. Different. Yes. And yet the same. And yet the same. And we all have a self. But yet they're selves. So what is the relationship between the self and selves? That's the second hypothesis. So if you have an interest in yourself. You want to go there. And, and, so, then, and show it also in the ox herding pictures of which you're going to give a talk on soon. Well, yeah, and how about the Diamond Sutra? Is that part of difference? Is, it, is that a part of difference? Yeah, like the difference between the good and the idea of the good, is there any difference? because there's a difference in the eight enlightenment experiences and each one shows a different level of reality, Antos, right? A different level of reality. <coughs> and that presupposes difference. So people are different, right? right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, what were you going to say? That makes a difference. All right. And we also have a great board of directors. We seldom meet, but they have a great spirit, and I offer a toast to them as well. And that includes, of course, the Gilberts. Right? And it's time we filled it up with some new numbers, which we're going to do. Oh, did you already do that? Oh, yeah. I missed that. So, who would like to follow me up and say a few words? Now, I suggest... Uh, Nancy, Bill, do you think it's fair? Oh, I think it's fair. Yeah, believe. Bill and I both agree. Well, you left me with this has left me with a wonderful question about different and difference, <laughs> but I will. <laughs> Hold on to that, put it aside, and um, say that it's a wonderful group of people, and thank you for everyone participating from themselves to the fullest extent that they are able in this adventure and, that we travel together. And for the salt, this, this is a good yes. time for it. Yes. yes, indeed. Yes. All right. Yes, that's right. Return of the light. Yes. Return of the light. Yes. Okay, there'll be a talk at Regina's house tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Right? I hope I'll be there.